Now let's move on to more morals um, with an activity that you could um, use with older students like teenagers or uh, students who are able to think critically, who have this uh, ability which is developed after the age of let's say seven for example. Let's look at the, the morals. Um, the first two, be helpful to your family when they are in need and appearances can be deceiving. Which story is this? You know, this is Cinderella, yes, this is Cinderella. Uh, appearances, she looks poor, but she's she becomes a princess in the end. And you know, when Charles Perrault wrote Cinderella, he uh, ended it with two rather conflicting morals. Like first, that goodness is more important than appearances, obviously. And second, in a slightly more cynical tone, that things like courage uh, and intelligence are important, but you always need a godmother or a godfather or uh, someone to help you. Like, in other words, there is no greater magic than the power of networking. This is how I perceive it. Uh, the third dot says, the bullet says, we can be friends with someone who's a little different. Or don't be afraid to ask for help. This is uh, obviously the Little Red Riding Hood, okay? Um, we can always talk to children about keeping their guard high and about cyber security, especially at these times where um, they share their information online. They have to be very careful with that. So it's not good to say your name and your give your address, your phone number to any stranger you meet on the net or even on the street, right? Last dot says, it's great to sacrifice everything for love, but make sure the feeling is mutual. Which story do you think I took this from? Because I want to talk to my teenagers about sacrifices that one is ready to make for love and the fragile boundaries uh, between life goals and obsession. Because you see, the prince didn't lose anything. The mermaid lost her, her tail, her feet were bleeding and she also lost her voice to be with him. But what did he lose? Did he make any sacrifices? That's a, qu a critical thinking question you can uh, use, yes, from The Little Mermaid to discuss with your students uh, about uh, relationships. Now, let's look at uh, fairy tales from other perspective, from another perspective. Uh, being good hearted is not enough. Life is all about networking. Don't share your personal information. Don't trust strangers. This is the Little Red Riding Hood. And sometimes you can't have the one you want. That is, don't be obsessed with a person, with a man, with a woman, with a life goal, becoming a doctor. Maybe you're not meant to become a doctor. You're, you're meant to become a nurse, a teacher, a secretary. We're all helpful in this world, okay? Um, I like to read stories to my, I like to read stories when my children were young and to my students and I sometimes read alone. And I believe that they're a vital part of everyone's life and everyone's childhood. Uh, but some works of literature and cinema also, it must be discussed with uh, the child so that they understand that uh, these pieces of art should be seen more critically. Uh, there is, in some cases, discrimination based on age, gender, appearance, nationality, race, okay? Uh, have you noticed how old people are always presented as witches or sorceresses? Um, sometimes, you know, students make 
um, pre-assumptions about age or how beauty is associated with virtue like uh, a, a beautiful girl is always good and an ugly girl is probably bad or how girls are mostly presented as helpless uh, unprotected weak uh, creatures waiting in the forest to be saved by the hunter or the godmother or the prince or the magician or whatever um, not being able to solve their own problems uh, this is my question and i want you to um, think of them i don't want to guide you into any any uh, conclusions now but i want you to think of them and discuss these with your students because fairy tales are a good opportunity uh, to encourage critical thinking. Uh, you could show uh, your students the pictures of the beautiful girl and the ugly girl and ask them, what do you think? Is a beautiful girl always kind hearted? Is an ugly girl always bad? I thought about that and I thought the only two stories I remember where the ugly people are good is the beauty and the beast and the hunchback of notre dame where the hunchback is ugly but he's good okay good-hearted oh.